Warning, Bronx and Donks are trained professionals. Do not attempt anything seen on the channel, unless you're a hand, obviously. Welcome back to another episode of Bronx and Donks, and today we're chasing horned cattle on the desert. Welcome back to another episode of Bronx and Donks. This is part three on the Arizona Strip, and I'll tell you what, this season finale is not going to disappoint. In the first two videos, we gathered the cattle, then we branded them. Along the way, we had a couple rodeos. We had to rope a lost calf. But today's video is about to blow those other videos away. By far my favorite video of the series. Also, one of the more disappointing videos of the series you're going to see one of the most disappointing situations a rancher can find himself in. And for my haters out there who are going to see this and who have seen my previous videos and had a problem with it, I'll address you a little bit in this video. So make sure you guys stick around to hear my thoughts on it. I hope you guys enjoy. Today is the big cattle drive. We'll be herding the cattle approximately 15 miles to a corral where we will then load up the cattle on semi trucks and haul them to Utah. We can't load the cattle out of the corral we're currently at because the 15 mile stretch of dirt road to the corral is terrible. Luckily this year, we were able to get one semi truck through and loaded the calves on it. Sometimes calves don't keep a fast pace on long cattle drives, so we were gonna haul them in front of the herd to speed up the day and incentivize the mama cows to walk in the right direction. After loading up the calves, it was time to start the cattle drive. But when we saddled our ponies up, this happened. Oh, there's running down the road. Yeah. If I can, you got her. Now that chase was crazy, but we finally roped him. And yes, we did break the saddle. Oh man, it tore up the tree. But more importantly, the horse was okay, and we got him back to the owner. And finally, it was time to start the cattle drive. So Zane's got the truck. All the calves are loaded up in the truck here. He's gonna go ahead of us. We're just about to head out. Here's Joey, he don't say much. Just wait. What's going on? I'm just waiting for Mike. Just waiting. Uh, All right, we're gonna turn the cows out. We gotta play defense and keep them on the left side of the road and hope for the best. We're off. The first half hour of the drive was extremely important. On the right side of the road, there was a forest of endless cedars. And if you've watched any of my previous videos in the series, you know the cattle are pretty dang good at disappearing in the thick trees. So we had to keep the cattle on the left side of the road to discourage any mama cows from trying to turn around. We're just gonna get out of here and we're gonna stay on them. Like <laughs> well said. Like fly on a turd. <laughs> we got a whole line of us up and down this road, keeping them on that side because over there, it's not too thick, it's pretty manageable. But on this side, it's a mess. The last thing we want is for those cows running up in the cedars over here. Everything's been going pretty smooth so far. We should be out of this thick stuff pretty soon here. See how it's not so thick over here? It's thick country, so we're all on our toes and we're ready for a rodeo. So we got cows breaking off. Hey cattle, hey! Hey cattle, hey! Hey cattle, hey! Crack that bull 
Guys, we're going through the gate. Look at all them long horns. Dude, that is freaking legit. So Corby was walking up this line here. I was about 20 yards that way. Dang, you're lucky. <laughs> Dude, I tell you, if I'm looking for cows, I'll find you a shed. Oh, that thing is a toad, man. Wow. That's freaking legit. <laughs> kind of heavy for being old. Still, that thing. Dang. Yeah, that's awesome. You lucky son of a gun. We made it through the cedars without any complications. The day was off to a great start, but it didn't take us long to run into our first problem. If you want to help Eli hold these cows, I'm gonna go spook those others off. Okay. Ahead of us were neighbor cows, and we didn't want them mixing in with our herd, so Daniel ran ahead to push them off the trail. Hey cows. About six miles into the trek, we arrived at a watering hole. After giving the herd a big drink, we started down the trail again. And this is when disaster struck. We noticed the cow having a hard time walking. This was because she was in labor. I just barely had a cat, dude. Like that thing just flopped out. After giving birth, the cow licked off her calf for maybe 20 seconds, if that. She then realized the herd was leaving her behind, so she took off, abandoning her calf to catch up with the herd. Instead of catching up, she ran in the wrong direction. At this point, it was crucial. We found this cow as fast as possible. gone up over this first little hill in front of us and was running up pretty high up there. It looked a lot bigger from back there. It's just a little guy. Yeah. If I can fish for it, I'll take it home. I haven't seen any tracks yet. <laughs> well, looks like this was a big shed back in the day. Chalk toss? What do you say we have a chalk toss? Chalk toss. Chalk toss. I don't know if we're gonna ever find that cat again. So Corby and I are out here looking for this cow. It just straight up ditched this calf. Barely sniffed it, licked it a couple times, and then the herd started heading out and it tried following. Uh, I guess for whatever reason, nobody shut the gate. So we tried roping it, it got away from us, and now we're out here looking. And I really don't think it's gonna go back for its calf. There's not a great chance we find it. Uh, I guess we can just keep looking is all we can do. So my guess is that this cow is probably hunkered down under a tree somewhere. We're all spread out through these trees, walking through them, making a little push. We're heading back towards the crail, see what we can find. Made it to the top of the hill. I'm not seeing anything up here. I'm gonna make my way back down to the crail, see if those guys have seen anything. So 
we made it back down to the corral. There's no sign of the mama cow yet, but she could have tried following them. She could have run back home to the corral. She could have went anywhere, or she could just be hunkered down somewhere. No sign of her yet. We'll keep you updated if anything changes. Barely fit, but still soaking wet but uh hopefully we can find that mom what do you think i don't know it's not like a very promising no it's not she took off still soaking wet She's out of here now it's kind of hard to show you guys how disappointed we were but you can kind of tell from our body language we weren't talking to each other we just felt defeated those first few hours in a calf's life are important when a calf is first born the mom's milk contains colostrum. This colostrum has antibodies in it, which is important for the calf's immune system. And there's only a short window where the calf can absorb all this colostrum and the mom's producing colostrum. It's important this calf drinks the colostrum as soon as possible. The faster you drink the colostrum, the better it is for their immune system. And without the antibodies, this calf is at a huge disadvantage. Typically, bottle-fed calves aren't as healthy as natural-fed calves. Now in this situation, we did have a milk cow back home named Todd. Here's a couple pictures of her. Now that's a great alternative, but ideally we'd want that calf to stay with its mom. And like I said earlier, this is probably one of the most disappointing situations you can find yourself in. Here's the question, why did the cow take off without the calf? Staying with the herd was more important than getting left behind and nurturing her calf to health. I think this is the perfect opportunity to talk about some of my haters. If you read through my comment section on this video or previous videos, a lot of comments say that roping is animal abuse. You should never rope a cow because it's bad for them. Well, I'd argue in this situation, if just one of us had gotten a rope on that cow, we wouldn't be in the situation. We would have been able to bring them to the corral, pair them up, and the two would still be together. We use our ropes as a tool on the ranch to keep our cattle safe and healthy. Now, that truck ride back to the herd was definitely a long one, and you can just see the defeat on our face. But on a positive note, we got the calf, we were able to clean her off, bring her home, and we put her on old Todd the milk cow. I'm not proud about it, but you can consider this the ride of shame. After returning back to the main herd, we noticed a few cows that kept trying to turn back and head home. Eventually, they became too much of a problem and would slow the herd down. We were wearing our horses out, constantly chasing them around, so we decided to rope them and load them in the trailer. Good cut. Good cut. I like it, cut, G. Oh, coming back. Hey. Like and subscribe to this video. <laughs> yeah, like and subscribe. <laughs> he's, he's been talking to Addison Ray, and uh, they're pretty Dang. much freaked out. You know, you kind of struck me as a more Dixie D'Amelio kind oh. of person. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> What's that horse's name? Thunder. We send old Thunder into the trees because he can fit under the branches. Yeah. 
Well, I feel like we're getting pretty close. We've been going down the road for probably eight miles now, maybe a little more. These cows are starting to act a little tired, but I think we're almost there. Just keep her on the road, he says. Ripped my hand open, man. Man, oh. is this the one that's been turning back on us all day? Yeah, sure is. Yeah. Good for open, Kyle. Thanks, man. We were so close to catching this cow back up to the main herd, but she decided she was done playing games. Cowboy tip of the day. If you make yourself a pig and string, you better use it. Around it like this. Take it around this leg. Okay. We still love you, but uh, just not as much as that other cow. We get a little gross. thirsty out here on the Arizona Strip. <laughs> oh. <laughs> nice and warm. Beautiful. Tyler and Corby are gonzo. We don't know where they are. They have some cow broke. But we're finally to the crowd after like 15, 20 miles. I don't know. It's been a long freaking day. <laughs> uh, don't forget to spin that subscribe button. Yes, sir. We sent a trailer back to pick up the cow, and after catching back up to the herd, it only took us a few more miles to reach the corral. We then loaded the cattle on semi trucks and started hauling them to Utah. Now, you might have recognized a few of these cows because they belong to a stock contractor named Zane Danzy. Huge shout out to Zane for letting me tag along on this cattle drive. Go give him a follow on Instagram and Facebook to find any jackpots or rodeos he's putting on near you. There's only so much that can be said in a 10 minute YouTube video. So if you want to dive deeper on these serious subjects, make sure you go check out the podcast. We're going to be talking about all the stories we don't catch on camera, behind the scenes of Bronx and Donks, and of course, serious subjects like this one. <laughs> Just giving ourselves a little bath. <laughs>